Thank you, Oksana, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you, Bogdan. I have a question. President Biden was warning Ukrainian uh, that Putin gonna invade, he gonna start a war, aggression, and uh, he was talking about this for a month, I think, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. more. Uh, but I don't think he did anything enough to prevent this. Do you think it could be prevented or he could do something better than just talking and uh, saying that we're not going to fight for Ukraine and not, we're not going to send soldiers? Ukrainian didn't ask to begin with, you know. Yes, it was strange to me from first day I hear his excitement about being I. I use my sarcasm. I call him uh, Putin's PR coordinator or mass media person. Why president of United States of America talking about plans of another president, rather to say dictator Putin, and he's doing the job of a media coordinator who will work and knowing his ability to do a little bit more than just talking and warning who war, why he was still doing that for, I can say for a few months, because all that heat started in end of November last year. And if he had a, such a great information, very precise, I believe it was information from American sources, of course, why he did not do anything to prevent it. I'm not even talking about stopping it in the first day. It was so many opportunities to prevent it before it happened, especially knowing Biden knew all dates and he, uh, he was re releasing those dates a few times, February something, February 16, February 22. So, Instead of running and screaming and telling whole world, I think it could be much better to do to say nothing, maybe like private conversation, maybe some private exchange, but to use all his ability, all his sources, all his energy to have immediate meeting with NATO, immediate meeting with some even not NATO country in Europe and do everything possible to prevent that war. They knew what Putin is capable of. They knew for eight years Putin was fighting Ukraine. Even that war of 2014 was pretty much uh, illegal and uh, it actually showed Putin's desire to have Ukraine back into his new USSR, which he dreams about all the time. So I think it was kind of strange, especially when from day first or even before, I think it started in Munich, before the war, Biden was saying, sending his message, doesn't matter what happens, we're not going to put American troops, NATO troops on the territory of Ukraine, we're not going to send heavy uh, supply, heavy uh, weapon. Why? It's, it's not even diplomatically correct. It's against all diplomacy. Actually, it, it, it sounds to me like he's giving green light to Putin because if you let in your enemy, if you consider Putin as an enemy, not a partner, which I think is supposed to be this way, it's like letting your enemy, hey, let me tell you I'm not going to fight you. You're welcome to come. You're not going to have any... Uh, great uh, resistance from locals because we're not gonna send them any weapon and be sure feel free to do whatever you want to do because we're not gonna send american troops in any circumstances how he how did he know what's exactly what's gonna happen how he ca can give that promise without even knowing what's gonna happen in the first couple of days of war or what size of that invention will be so it, when you look at all those puzzles together, together it gave me a picture of something is not quite right from the beginning. And his action, it's, 
I, I have a simple metaphorical example. Uh, I live in Oregon and we're very used to fires in the fire season. So when fire starts to happen in some area, when we see a neighbor's house, it's supposed to be in fire very soon. What we do? We don't speak, we don't scream, we, we, we come there, we, we bring some additional water hose, we call fire department, we're trying to prevent that fire, right? If we can. But we don't use our energy to say, oh, listen, it's going to be fire very soon. Just... We're trying to help that neighbor. And yeah. he's doing totally opposite. So it gives me very, very bad smelling impression by the first. He was not ready to have a real war. He did not have any idea how it's going to start. It's going to start with big carpet bombing in almost every city of Ukraine. So he wasn't ready for that. He was ready for a totally different scenario. Because as he ordered to evacuate the uh, American embassy from Kiev to Lviv, actually it's my city, and he did it in such a drastic way, very similar to what happened in Afghanistan. He left behind all Ukrainian service people working for them for many years. They destroyed American embassy communication system, which was huge and it's very expensive installation. They destroyed to the level it cannot be uh, put together again to, to, to total dysfunction. And that just shows me they probably never plan to have embassy in, Lviv, in Kyiv anymore because according to plans of Putin, and actually it was proved first couple days of this war, he wanted to take half of Ukraine, all east part by Dnipro River to his imaginary new USSR. And probably it could be much easier for the United States, for Biden. I'm not afraid to say that. Just to, to be kind of a big peacemaker. Oh, listen, we didn't, didn't have time to put sanctions because everything happened so fast. And maybe it was just a choice of half of Ukrainians. And that scenario thank God, did not work. And new scenario was like a nightmare for Putin and for Biden. Because he was not ready what to do, what to say. Even his press people were kind of shocked. They had to rebuild their strategy. And those first critical days, I think if he is a real friend of Ukraine and he did not want Putin to win, he would do everything possible and impossible to put together all sources, even NATO sources, not in a direct way to, to fight on the Ukrainian land. But listen, we know they have so many different opportunities to fight. They have such a different kind of super weapon. Nobody even knows about it. So what the reason to have the strongest army and military sources if we never can use it, even in that situation, when they hit Lviv area, which is a few miles from Polish border, it means from NATO border, and still no reaction. You so really... all together looks, yeah. looks not good to me. I'm not a military expert, but I know, for example, in South Korea and North Korea confrontation, when North Korea was threatening or there was some incidents military with uh, uh, and uh, to prevent further escalation what mm -hmm. American did uh, military they did exercise military exercise yeah. it's not part of NATO uh, South mm -hmm. uh, Korea but it was mm -hmm. done and it did stop further escalation the same thing we see now in Baltic Sea uh, mm -hmm. American uh, military came to Russia, to Kaliningrad, uh, approached 30 miles, I believe, and they mm -hmm. exercised with Polish, they uh, made yeah. military exercise. Uh, in, in Poland right now also we see this uh, uh, international um, 
a military exercise and mm -hmm. use signal to Putin. This is, we're gonna dis exactly. defend and Putin says what? Nothing. He didn't say nothing. Even it was uh, in front of uh, his uh, military base, Kaliningrad, and uh, there is no reaction because Putin respect only. Yeah only strengths and the same thing could, could be done in ukraine instead of warning yes uh, for two months they could do they did it before many times in 2009 yes, every year yeah. they did military exercise with uh, yeah. 15 different countries involved and the same thing could be easily repeated before aggression it would stop putin even you know it he wouldn't even think to try to attack Ukraine yeah. during this exercise because it was... Uh... I, I remember last sea breeze, I believe it was 19 or 20, I, I don't remember exactly, but I usually listen to Ukrainian news and it was such always such excitement. Two US Navy ships, you just enter a neutral water in the Black Sea or even Mediterranean and they just, they do nothing, they just stay there, they, they just present. And in that moment, Everybody knows it's a big sign for Russia. Putin is invisible. Nobody does nothing, not even a protest. All mass media quiet. And if Biden could, as a commander of chief, in chief, he could give that order immediately, even if he did not do it in, uh, before uh, February 24th. Okay, what the problem? To do it I now, think, I think neutral water, not right? A couple days and they enter in Black Sea from Mediterranean Sea and just stay there. It could be big, it could prevent bombing of so many cities, even including my city Lviv, West Ukraine, because they were sending missiles, cruise missiles from a Russian ship in the Black Sea. And even till today, they're using those bases just to shut uh, our, you know, yeah. just to do a lot of damage and bomb our cities. And uh, generally, it could be like big warning sign, don't do that, just sit still. And he didn't do it. Why? How many people, how many politicians, how many uh, smart people just, they should ask that question give us at least one reason and even later all development all the terrible story with polish uh, jets it, it, it's so ashamed for me to know president of united states put personal personal veto on that decision who can explain the reason i, I don't see any reason because as uh, I remember from one press conference, Jen Psaki, when somebody asked about prevention of war, she said, oh, we could not do preventive um, uh, things because it could escalate a level of Russian attack. So that sentence, it's not even correct grammatically. Like, I, I, I'm not getting what you're trying to say. It doesn't sound good and logical. So. Everything happens every day. We see, we expect like big action. Oh my God, uh, United States can just move a finger and everything will, will change. No, nothing changed. He's talking, he's promising. This is what politicians do. Oh, and all mass media, Mr. Biden said this, Mr. Biden mentioned that few times, White House immediately correcting his saying because he said something not politically correct and nothing else is happening even that uh, humanitarian help or that first package of help for ukraine it's not uh, it's not moving to ukraine why bureaucracy what kind of bureaucracy it has to be priority it has to be number one that all that package supposed to be sent to ukraine maximum five six days even not three or four yes. It's second month, I heard uh, Congresswoman yes. Victoria Sparks, uh, even she initiated a, a kind of a, a committee to uh, investigate uh, yeah. what happened with this uh, help, why it's stuck in Poland for second month. Yes, just Ukraine. imagine, investigation, committee, uh, yeah, in the time of a war. It's a, and every day we see 
children, women being yes. bombed. They, we, we saw yes. yesterday uh, they bombed uh, uh, a rail station. Kramatorsk. And, yeah, Kramatorsk. Yes. They, killed, they knew so, it's yeah. going to be thousands of people there. They did it deliberately. It's another genocide. And actually, uh, have you noticed they use uh, some very expensive few million dollar bomb and they still have debris from that uh, explosion and that fragment of a bomb has a Russian sign for children. What does it mean? Maybe on children or for killing children. What children are they talking about? It's like they black kill children. They, they kill children there. Yeah. So to make a sign, like they usually make a sign on a helicopter to Berlin, you know, like on a tank. It's, it's from that uh, marismatic thoughts from World War II. Oh, we have yeah. to go to Berlin. So what Berlin are you talking about right now, people? And actually, uh, Germany is the biggest uh, supporter of, financial supporter of Putin till today. I think they're trying to change it a little bit, maybe after Bucha. Um, uh, you know, terrible yeah, crime, but, but there's still. No, no, no uh, justification why you delay in this, why you yes. stop Polish plane that Polish was given. Uh, if you could even, uh, if you're afraid to escalate and prevent yes. the Third World War, so because this is NATO involved, so how you can explain uh, Turkey could stop Russian mm -hmm. ships and didn't mm -hmm. let them in Black Sea and Putin says what? Yes. Nothing. Nothing. Yes. And he su Turkey supply uh, high end military uh, drones that uh, can be uh, the Ukraine is using them very effectively to destroy tanks, uh, all military and they, they can even detect them because they uh, really advanced and Turkey is a uh, member of NATO and uh, why yes only the, the power the strength and the uh, no, general answer is it's very simple if you want to to win over putin if you want ukraine to win you're gonna help ukraine if you want to keep putin as a leader of a terroristic country you will do anything possible to make it look like you don't like him but under the table, you still going to keep him alive because our latest news, Biden needs Putin as a middleman or his assistant. I don't know who is assistant of whom, but it doesn't matter. In a, that terrible, very suspicious deal with Iran. And Putin is supposed to get, what, $10 billion for that deal? How it goes together with blaming Putin, oh, he's such a terrible person, oh, he's such an enemy, I don't buy it. And if you use like little time machine and go back year plus, we understand how it started. Like you just mentioned, three reasons to have a war, money, money, money. Uh, yes, Biden did not give money directly, but what did he do? First day in the office, he started to be United States because of Biden. We became a first and very solid client of Putin gas station. We eliminate our local sources of oil immediately. And they took off sanctions from Nord Stream 2 and they started to buy, uh, I remember, 600,000 barrels of oil or maybe even more every day from Russia, transporting it to United States and claiming it's like more beneficial for our climate. <laughs> High school student can explain you why it's much worse. And he's keeping doing it till today. So actually, all that embargo talk, it just blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I'm signing something, but we still don't know when does it start to be in, in, in full charge, when it starts to work. So it might be another week, another month, or another couple of months. So actually, Biden made Putin and Russia great again by 
all price rising like three times than before Biden. Remember how much you spend to fill up your tank. I do see difference 2.5 times more. In some other states, I believe it's three or four times more. It did not start from Ukraine conflict, how you can read in some media right now. I'm keeping uh, reminding people, listen, oil price went up one year before real Ukraine war happens. So it's not because of Ukraine you're going to have higher prices. It's not because of Ukraine they now they preparing us for big shortage in food and TV mm -hmm. because conflict of Russia and Ukraine. So who started that conflict, which is actually a war and brutal invasion, whose fault is because Ukrainian farmers cannot start uh, you know, their agriculture war, and of course, it's going to be some influence on world economy and supply of wheat and other products. Because if world cares about Ukraine, they should care about our fields, about our farmers. Let them do their job and bring that to American market. And American are worried because maybe because of instead of 17 uh, different kinds of bread, they're going to have two and a little bit uh, more expensive. Yeah, it's not convenient actually, but is it the real price for thousands of Ukrainian killed? This is terrible experience we're talking about it's right now. It's not even uh, about if you don't... This is terrible experience we're talking about it's right now. It's not even uh, about if you don't even touch Ukraine. Well, uh, before starting buying oil from Russia, oil price was really low here in United States. Yeah, it was like $30 per and, barrel, I believe. Yeah, and it's only like when Biden came, he stopped all oil, oil production, you know, he stopped a yeah. Canadian project and he started buying oil from mm -hmm. Russia to save environment. How are you going to save environment if you, uh, you still have to use the same amount of oil that you used before because uh, green energy will take uh, another decade or a couple of decades yeah. and this the same amount of oil you have to use for this decade but you have yes. to bring it from russia bring it to united Packers, states Packers transporting and you See. have to use extra i don't know million of barrel just to transfer it to united yes. states so and you're actually making it worse and Russian oil Russia is much, oil. Uh, much uh, dirtier. It's more, it's, uh, it's, it's worse for environment. Yeah, in, in Russian much... oil not such a good quality as you remember. It, it, it's, it's, it's kind of dirty oil. Yeah. Our uh, American oil is much better, much cleaner. So even that refining takes additional, additional inputs yeah. on it. Additional that. refining but, and transport. Yes. Transport. It, where yeah. is Russia and try to bring it yes. here? It's, uh, yes. it's, it's it, crazy. It just, Nobody you know, can put this. People just don't talk about it. Yeah. And, but uh, this is a real, real source. Uh, and I make my own kind of funny expression. Shershele palm, shershele oil. Everything started from oil. And everything started from Putin being rich enough to spend millions and billions of dollars today bombing Ukraine. And uh, like you mentioned, one billion every day one billion getting... every day putin getting from oil and ukraine exactly. got 800 million help for the whole year uh, yeah so for how, ukraine. So, uh, how you can uh, fight enemy like that yeah even that small help got delayed somewhere for no yeah. we don't know the reason why but uh, right yeah. now official ukrainian official and saying that uh, it probably will come now after we saw all these uh, uh, war crimes in Bucha, in, yeah. uh, in Kramatorsk. But until we see it, we, we're not going to believe exactly. it. Exactly. Because so far, we just hear promises and we don't see uh, yes. this delivery. So, and it's so frustrating because in this time, we have absolutely unique time in the history of planet Earth. Since World War II, we never had such a terrible big war in, in the middle of Europe. And 
it's not a time for politician to give us promises and work on a camera and work for journalists and to worry how they gonna look on the mass media. It's a time to to roll your uh, sleeves and do some real work and real job. Ex especially when you again you have to go back and you have to inform people. Uh, United States was well, the it's, it's not like the big favor for Ukraine they are doing, we are doing. United States was a country which signature seal Budapest Agreement. And it's an obligation of United States of America at least to give some reasonable help for Ukraine in this terrible situation. And, but it looks like, oh my God, we have to be so appreciative to Mr. Biden because he's doing a lot. Mr. Biden, you're not doing a lot. You're doing very, very little. And this is not a way to, to fight Putin. And why Ukraine has to do it instead of whole war? Yeah, we do have support. Yeah, we do have help from many, many countries. But uh, openly speaking, from United States and from NATO, it has to be the most impressive help. And quality of that help matters too. Because to give us just numbers of millions of dollars, it's a one thing. But even now, I believe in Senate, some senators, uh, Congress people were requesting precise explanation what money goes for what kind of weapon because you know, it, it makes a difference to sell, uh, send us blankets like Obama did before, and it's still uh, some amount of money has to be uh, paid for that. But now we need heavy weapon. We need some missile protection system. Uh, we have such a need every day. We be using all those uh, heavy uh, heavy equipment but we need more. We don't need just simple rifles or even javelins. It's not enough. In the situation we are right now, we need to close our sky by ourselves. So we don't need you to do it for us, but we really need to have real equipment to do the job. So what do you think? I, I, don't, I don't buy it either, because uh, uh, if you if you're afraid that it can escalate if you give help then the same way you can uh, uh, you can say that turkey should stop uh, russian warship uh, in black sea because mm -hmm. turkey can escalate uh, turkey should stop supplying uh, drones that you know very mm -hmm. effective weapon to mm -hmm. uh, to destroy Russian mm -hmm. tanks. NATO member, yeah. NATO member. Why it didn't happen? And we know George Bush during Georgian War. It was yeah. maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't know exactly twenty years. Two thousand eight, I believe. Yes. So how he stopped it? War was stopped by George mm -hmm. Bush. How he did it? He sent humanitarian planes to Tbilisi, yes. capital of <laughs> Georgia. He sent two military ships, and not even like uh, very big ships, just to support kind of uh, Georgian and Russian were afraid they're gonna, you know, damage yeah. uh, or kill American and they stop. Invasion and war was stopped after it was done. Yeah. And now we have that example of, it's not Russia and Ukraine only. Listen, Russia is using another country territory, Belarus, to send troops they cross in the border from Belarus. It, it has yeah. nothing to do with border of Russia. So another country is involved. involved in that conflict on the side of Russia because they have kind of agreement. Fine. So why we cannot do the same with Polish border? Yeah, it's a NATO country, but geographically it's just another country. And they, because Putin said, oh, I'm afraid Ukraine and NATO gonna attack Russia, yeah, sure. So we can say the same, listen, we have bombing happened 11 miles from Polish border, we are afraid too. So we just gonna help like brotherhood help to Ukraine, not as a NATO country, Poland doing absolutely amazing job, but 
as a member of NATO, they could say the same. Listen, we just worry because you're dangerously close to our borders. So why? And another moment uh, nobody is talking about. Before war started, a whole world was under impression of a big, strong, very well equipped and trained Russian army. So everybody was shaking. Oh my God, it's such a monster. After first week, all war, especially United States with their intelligence service, they immediately knew that monster was on a clay legs. It's a total, total fake because they probably stole 90% of money supposed to be for military industry. So now you, uh, Russia opened their real face. So that fake monster doesn't exist anymore. So if you want really to help Ukraine and if you want to crush terroristic country of Russia, it's a perfect moment to do that because you see them naked. You see what they, how they look in real life, how they can fight. So all that uh, uh, situation of we are so afraid of strong Russian uh, military uh, you know, economy and everything and such a great president Putin it has to go to nowhere. It's a perfect way to realize, listen, that monster is so weak. We can, we, can just, we can just fight him right now and clean the planet Earth from that terroristic state. They don't they even don't have do to, it. to fight. The American they don't do it. That weakness fight. is... Yeah. yeah. And, and just give means to protect. Just stop. Don't stop at least... Yeah. Uh, other country giving Ukrainian weapon like uh, MiGs, uh, these planes, uh, 40 years old planes from Poland, they were yes. stopped by Biden because it's going to escalate. So Personal veto. Personal veto. How you, how you can explain it? Why? Because of what? Because you... Normal person would not find answer for that decision. And he's a president of United States of America. He has to have his personal reason to stop that process, to put his personal veto. It means, let us think, who is a real enemy and who is a real friend of Mr. Putin? Even calling him Mr. Putin, for me, it's like disgusting because you cannot him Mr. He's an enemy, he's a terrorist, he's a war criminal. And Probably they still need Russia as a strong country. They still, maybe, maybe, I'm going back to those Cold Wars uh, philosophy times. They need Russia as a big enemy just to keep everybody in shape. Yeah, I can understand that. But to weaken Russia, to fight it till that when they're going to lose their ability to fight another country, it's an absolutely easy process right now. It can be done just like this. And Biden is playing his game. I, maybe it's not him. Maybe it's, uh, you know, somebody is behind him. Maybe he's okay. just the face of another problem we, 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 we're facing here in America. But it doesn't look logical to us. It doesn't uh, give us explanation why it's happening like this. 46 days of terrible war after those big crimes we're discovering right now. Yeah, war a little more responsive right now after those terrible visual images we see. But I would expect it's going to be like big change in that war to totally different reaction, totally different scale. But no, it's, oh yeah, we're so concerned. Oh yeah, we're so upset. Oh yeah, Putin's such a such a big war crime uh, guy and that's it no it doesn't work in a way it's supposed to work even boris johnson yesterday came to ukraine yes personally yeah the capital of ukraine it was great actually he yeah now you real... know who, who's our friend yeah he's he's a real friend and he did it even before he he crossed uh, russian uh, uh, crimea and uh, he crossed the Black Sea 
on a small military ship he said yeah. he, he showed that he's not afraid of russian and yeah russian, he used they, friend to get they to pretended yes. they were threatening but they did nothing they did nothing yes. because they respect yeah. power and they knew they're gonna have big problem if they even yes uh, damage that ship or yes but when united states decided to uh, remove embassy from Kiev, it was another sign i understand it was still a risk but even diplomats they have to understand till they still have their office in Kiev, nobody would really attack i mean putin would not be having balls to attack Kiev in a, such a drastic way but after all world knows oh yeah it's free no americans there just just go and do your job it's yeah in afghanistan what they, they didn't yeah, evacuate the afghanistan even citizen and here they gave like months before warning you have to for all american citizens later on embassy yeah. uh and uh instead of doing this at least military exercise it would stop putin there was yes. no blood no yes no no war it was so easily yeah. prevented i think my yeah. theory i'm speculating but now because of this war administration has reason why they can uh justify this oil prices and what's mm -hmm. going on in this country it's ruining the economy it's, it's it has nothing for this country. to do oil prices jump three times up year before but so they use yeah, some narrative. people they use i hear this. that oh yeah yeah because of ukrainian conflict you have oil price people you were asleep in a coma for, for 10 months so 14 months come on it started to happen in 2021 in january end of january it started like this what it has to do with ukraine right now so <laughs> excuse me <laughs> Well, uh, uh, this gap of, uh, you know, they have like gaps of mission, mi missing information. For mm -hmm. example, I, I talked to some journalists, uh, Ukrainian and, uh, and other people, and they kind of don't even have idea how, where United States was getting oil mm -hmm. before this administration. It was, yeah. it was uh, produced in United States and uh, it was actually more then uh, United States could consume energy. United States we were could export. Yeah, yes, exactly. So only because there was no war, no nothing. Just first week when Biden came to office, mm -hmm. administration, they stop all this production. They stop C Canadian uh, project with the oil pie XL, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the beginning of uh, prices. Uh, yeah, why we pay three times more to fill up our uh, gas tank? Everybody why? sees this, and it's it's obvious that if you put these two dots together, mm -hmm. it's obvious what the, the yeah. price, why is the reason. There was no war, no conflict, and United States didn't buy oil at that time from Russia yeah. or from anyone else. It was producing, and oil costed like thirty dollars a barrel yeah now it's 100 it was, and more and buying from russia and still not, below two dollars yeah it's, it's, eight or it's something. unbelievable now, how people five and can, six in some states can can just compare these two dots no and i think another problem we have here i just want to touch it very briefly we're talking about prevention of war prevention of russian invasion but now i'm kind of going back what i was reading i was trying to be on the top of all news and very very often i didn't know how it's gonna end but it was kind of bad feeling to me very often between lines in very respectful american mass media i was seeing those signs they were quoting russian information from russian pro putin propaganda for example russia today it has it had perfect english translations and many many respectful people who are really good in politics who has who have everything right in their analysis suddenly they were putting those lines talking with great respect about mr putin with great respect about country of russia about russian economy something about 
golden back Russian ruble, something about fighting deep state and oh, it's like, what are you talking about people? And it was like big base for making Putin legitimate leader and making Russia as a very powerful, respectful country. And it gave me a very bad impression, but I did not expect it's gonna be so bad. And now, because of that preparation, it was another paid wave of Russian propaganda, believe it or not, now we're fighting big information war, because what we see on TV, on some different kind of hosts and speakers, even very respectful political leaders. I was witnessing that last week on a very, very interesting meeting, 5,000 people attending. They were presenting information about Ukraine in a way I left that meeting. I went outside, I could not breathe. So they spreading information about Ukraine as a bad country, poor country, full of Nazis, full of bad corrupted people. They don't mention about thousand civilians killed and they present Russia as a big partner country of America and respectful leadership and about that wow. gold back to ruble, which sounds just sarcastically funny right now. So, and main line, what I could understand, it was openly said, Ukraine has to stop fighting. Ukraine has to surrender. You have, Ukraine has to give up all those territories and at least half of Ukraine. Ukraine has to be part of a big good thing, uh, Soviet Union, new Soviet Union, which Putin is trying to put together. So they're making Putin look like a good guy because they don't understand what Soviet Union was about. They don't understand how good for Ukraine to be independent. And they call us poor country. Excuse me for one moment. I believe uh, minimum wage in Ukraine is three times more than in Russia. Only one little example. And they still keep in that line of propaganda, making uh, a big part of America to wonder why we should support uh, Ukraine in the first place, why we should send even those little money to Ukraine because it, it's not worth it. Ukraine should be eliminated as a country. And this is so, so strange and so scary to me and to you and to all people who know the truth. So this is another part of my big doubt about Biden intention because I hear those things from very respectful politician, it cannot be unnoticed. So if it's not working in the favor of uh, present time Biden's ideology toward Ukraine, I don't know why it's still there. Because again, we see things is very clear, black and white. How they can formulate totally different position of let's say, American society on that war. So it, it, it all comes together to very, very suspicious conclusion to me. Something is not quite in the general picture. And it looks to me if Biden, as a commander in chief, as a president of United States, wanted to win this war on the side of Ukraine, he would do it just like this. They, they have sources. They have a way to do that. And what he's doing right now, he's trying to prolong that process. He's trying to see Ukraine bleeding till death. It's already really bad. And we're still expecting that big battle in Donbass and who, who knows where it's going to happen. It's still a danger of a chemical or nuclear weapon because Putin is a person. He's not just a terrorist. He's, he's mentally... And capable of even psychopath. He's a... yes. So now our line of again, President Biden as a president of the United States, the biggest, strongest country in the world, has to be absolutely clear in his message to the world. 
and why we have to sit and guess about his intentions. It's not clear. It's very foggy. So from one hand, yeah, he, he's trying to, to make a big, uh, good image, but it's not a time for making an image for blah, 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 and good words. What he says and what he does, it's a two different thing. So we have to really, really fight that information war and fight that opinion. Oh, we still help in Ukraine, we, we support. No, 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 we need to see action. And if it's not changing in the next couple of weeks, uh, it's going to be bad. Because instead of help Ukraine and kill that snake, Putin snake, on the territory of Ukraine, with a little extra help, they're going to pay bigger price. Because in case he decides to do crazy things and make a strike on other countries, which he already declares through his mass media people. And he never, he said, oh yeah, we, we, we need to go through whole Europe. If it's not a message enough to worry for President Biden, I have no comment then. So it's, it's very bad. Uh, of course, it's, uh, it looks like at least he didn't do nothing to no. stop this war because yeah. military exercise and could prevent, prevent it. So it's a sec uh, step two. Step one was to prevent. Yeah. It could be no war at all. Don't finance or, your enemy. You yeah. can do exercise, military yes. exercise, like he does right now. And I think this country also in big, big trouble if Absolutely. Biden will stay in power. And this Absolutely. Biden, it's just a general, it's a administration. It's a yes. Biden is I feel sorry sometimes for him because it looks like he's lost. He do, he's he's not aware where he is. Nobody talking to him. He's wa wandering around yeah. the White House. Whole world can see this. He, yes, he is uh, just uh, uh, a victim of his corruption, his family yes. corruption. He... And all that terrible scandal with his son and why people started to talk about Ukraine like a bad country because of a bunch of corrupted politicians uh, doing dirty business with some few corrupted uh, politicians of Russia and Ukraine in Ukraine, including Biden's son and Biden himself. It's more than enough for 25 impeachments. We still did not have one. Why? Because Imagine that, that kind of a problem. Every respectful politician if they have some dirt with their kids, with their ma family members, how many times we have it in the history? They just have to say, excuse me, I'm resigning, and, and that's it, it's my fault. What we're facing today, he's surrounded by dirty, dirty, bad things, corrupted, money laundering, hiding some secrets, making money on Ukraine, making money on Russia, and it's all covered with bad, bad tasting sauce of his son and his family, his brother. Oh my God, it's like so much to think about. And they trying to cover it and he's still there. It's exactly. Really well, I, I think it's even, uh, even uh, the liberal media uh, right now uh, uh, showing some information about this uh, Biden laptop mm -hmm. investigation still a little bit but uh, at least they show right now as we yes. remember it was completely this information was uh, censored before election yeah and this is a biggest problem actually because yeah. they they can uh, delete all information that can compromise uh administration whatever uh, their agenda and uh, there is no any uh, protection from uh, from from this and yeah and even they control. use ukrainian conflict which is not conflict it's a bloody war as a cover-up as a distraction from all american problems but it's not supposed to be like this because he's a president of our country right here and we have more than enough problems to worry about situation in our country because we're really in really bad shape right now.
and to use Ukraine as a cover up and distraction. Yeah, I don't for all these oil prices for a refugee on the south border, it's a mm -hmm. Ukrainian didn't get any uh, refugee status. Uh, even Biden promised like a month ago, no, gonna accept hundred thousand. I have friends friend from Ukraine calling yeah. the U.S. embassy. Uh huh. It very it looks very good on the Facebook on the mass media. They cannot even get a talk to like person and make appointment, and it's such a process. I don't know how many people, maybe a few hundred, maybe a few thousand, especially maybe somebody who has already family in the United States. But why they have to enter the United States of America in a, such a humiliating way through Mexico? What yes. happened to our eastern border with New York flight? How, how, how come? Why they have to go through Mexico? And they have thousands of uh, illegal uh, aliens and refugees kind of refugees, people trying to get into our country illegally. And now Ukraine has to be like part of it. Why? First, it's a lot of infection, a lot of disease. Our Ukrainian citizens who was able to get to Mexico, I even don't know how, they are under stress, they need some rehabilitation. They don't need additional stress. 